Welcome everyone to Paranormal Roundtable, the only show where you get guys like me and Sal. Hey, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but hey, guess what, folks? We're here to share information with you and, you know, people's accounts and stories and, you know, and just plain have a good, good session here. Yeah. Um. So we, we, we've been kicking around like what we were going to talk about as far as like, we got some dog man stuff but we don't really know yeah they classify it as dog man so you know and and that's good because there are a lot of those what ifs you hear uh, a lot of the stuff about you know the seven types and all this other stuff i know there's a there's a meme out there i don't know i wouldn't call it a meme but somebody put together like a uh um one of those Microsoft the types. Yeah, yeah there the you go. Of, I, I have no idea what yeah, those the types. are. It's a meme or it's a picture going around. But well, my, my point is, is that so many people report so many different things. Why not? Let's, you know, let's, we're going to discuss things. Mystery that, canines. Yeah, maybe. definitely. That's, that's the, I guess so that's before we go down this path, let's uh, throw out the email. Yep. Like and subscribe. As always, doswolfman88 at gmail.com. Or wolf and sal at gmail.com gmail. send us your stories folks we want to we want to hear them we want to you know we want to check them out and everything else and we're going to do our dangest to put them on the show and please don't stop you're going to do your dangest dangest that's a texas is that word. a new word that's a that's a texas word right there well dangdest. you know what we need to come up with a new word for some of these weird cryptids we're going to be talking <laughs> you're about you're right There's about weird that weird stuff going on out there <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely, I, I don't know, but since today's topic is about this unique particular, is it a dog, man? Is it um, not? Some of these sound like hyenas. Yeah, I was going to say people, most people talk about the hyena looking creatures. So, you know, hey, let's, you know, especially like the guy from West Virginia. You you were telling me, you know, you, yeah. let, you, you let me that, in that on that That guy's not about, that, that one doesn't, you know, I, man, that's a hard one because, okay, so we were looking at some pictures, me and you. Mm-hmm. We're not going to get into the, all that, but looks very similar to what the guy was talking about. Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't, the ears were like, you know. Huge, tall, huge. long. Huge. They looked like they were nine inches long. But this guy was claiming that these things that had these ears We'll get to that in a second, though. Let, let, let's let's we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're, we're going to yeah. talk about some some stuff that's going on here in Texas, and then we're going to get back to that because I don't even. That's a whole long. Uh, that's a yeah. That's that's a whole, what's discussing that's a subject on its own. Yeah, it is. But let's yeah. I mean, this whole hyena phenomenon or hyena looking creature. Most people say it's a species of dog man. Call it whatever you like, but a lot of people have seen it. A lot of researchers are claiming yeah. that they're out there hearing these laughing sounds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I, akin to the, akin to a hyena, and I'm not going to tell them that they have they're not hearing that or they're not because I'm not there with them. Mm-hmm. But I will, you know, is uh, to quote Paul Sinclair, we have to you know rely on the witness and and the yeah. veracity of their account. So with that being said, well, Paul Sinclair was was talking about uh, yeah, he's talked about. There being a hyena in the, with the Flixton. Uh, oh, like, yes, yeah, yes. I yes. believe that there was like a hyena Cree type creature that was seen. But, you know, they're, he's, they're also getting reports of timber wolf looking werewolf type creatures. Now, mostly mm-hmm. what we're getting here, folks, in Central Texas is the reports of these just quintessential werewolf looking creatures. They just look like a timber wolf on two legs uh walking around very much akin like you you see that black werewolf on uh Van Helsing the Van Helsing, the Van movie Helsing yeah. with Hugh Jackman in it that's Hugh the Jackman one. yeah well, that werewolf had some big ears on it tall, yeah he did he did ears, I think I uh-huh. think and then, but it was but, quite interesting it was quite interesting though that that's your quintessential dogman look it looks like that where the the Van Helsing werewolf that's what it looks like and but I cannot get out of my head all the people that uh talk about this hyena looking creature now, yeah and, and is... i'm just gonna say most of those people that report the hyena looking creature yeah they dropped acid and then went to the zoo and that's what they're i'm just i'm just kidding we're just kidding, just folks. kidding. they did drop acid though yeah, who, knows? <laughs> who knows well i i can tell you like this i know I've that's, said it that's before. not i'm not disparaging anybody who sent those stories i'm making a joke okay all right everybody knows that the oil workers they don't do acid they do something else <laughs> 
I I'm bet they kidding. have a cold beer at the end of a that, long Maybe that's day. what it was. <laughs> now, we, we got some guys that, that now that, that were working in the oil fields. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll start with that, I guess. Yeah. The, um, I mean, because this whole deal with Abilene seems to be pretty popular. I know I've mentioned before in a previous episode that I had a friend that told me, and this was years ago, before I even got into the, the, the whole uh, dog man slash werewolf phenomenon, and it had anything to do with it. He was telling me a story about how people out there – you know, in the Abilene area, they had seen, you know, they have you know, hyenas out there chasing their cars. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what and, one of the stories is. And that's and that was the extent of the story that I got. I just looked at him like, oh, wow, this is really interesting. Hyenas in West Texas. I said, did they escape from a zoo or something? And he didn't give me much other than that. But again, he was, those are the stories that he got. So I was getting it, you know, secondhand. One of the previous episodes you actually talked about. A hyena type creature, I believe. Yes, I don't yes. remember exactly which one it was. Um, we had mentioned it. I think I had said something about it. On the one Haskell of, Rascal, maybe? One of the groups, too. Um, I know this person came from one of the groups, and they got me in touch with another person who had this experience. Oh, nice. So... Um, Let's let's I guess, I guess we could start with that one. I mean, yeah. Well, let's let's dive in. Let's okay. So what 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 happened? Like you were talking about hyenas chasing people's cars. So this person got in touch with me, and this happened to them a few years ago. They were driving in a Toyota. I believe I believe he said it was a Toyota Celica. It was not a real big car. Right. It's and about they, a midsize midsize car, and they were going down uh, the highway. Right, and the, the guy is he—he he was right outside of Stanford, I believe, and it's not far from. Yeah, it's all around the Abilene yeah, it's area. Lake Lake Stanford's right there, and then yeah. Haskell. The, of it's course, all the Haskell, in that Haskell. area. Yeah. So, anyways, very he, rural out there. Very rural, yeah. And so that they and I forgot what town he said he was going to, but uh, I think he was going from there to Brownwood. Oh, but uh, it's your it's your hometown. Uh, that's my neck of the woods. Yeah, and so they were going. It was it was a very dark night. Now, Sal knows from living out in that area and i've lived out in that area it's rural it's very rural there's nothing out there it's the rocky. towns are small it's mm-hmm. rocky and it's it's a lot of dirt brownwood's the biggest town if you're coming from abilene if you decide if you live in abilene and you decide to come to austin you have to go through, go through brownwood. brownwood there ain't nothing between there and brownwood either Mm-mm. not really no there isn't they're little no. towns no. as a matter of fact just to without breaking stride there's cross planes and there's been re- there's been a report i read and this is a shameful plug but hey guess what we have no Shame, about anybody. shameless shameless shameful <laughs> however you want to uh. but the guys at, at the true horror stories of texas had had a report submitted to them uh from a gentleman who spotted uh what was a werewolf slash dog man out there in cross planes now i find that really interesting because when you do the math, where Cross Plains sits in relation to what you're talking about, the Stanford area, Stanford, Texas, it's not too far. It's not too far for for a creature that is seven to eight feet tall, maybe larger. Running that, you know, that being part of its range would not be out of the ordinary because I'm a firm believer that a hundred mile territory would be easy for a dog man or a you know, werewolf to, to cover as, if as that's their range. What, if that's what this is. Yeah, if that's what it is. But this creature being however big it was, I'm sure it can cover that range and no problem. Yeah. So anyways, please continue. So the, the Stanford incident, what happened was, I don't I don't think it actually happened in Stanford. I, you know, it happened, he was, they were traveling the area. from there. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so it was at night and they were going through this area, <clears throat> very rural, and they, they thought that it was one of these shrub trees, like brushes. Yes. <clears throat> His wife said that it looked like it was blowing, like 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 a b- b- like one of those mesquite. Like a tumbleweed? <laughs> yeah, one of those mesquite bushes out yeah. there. Like it was blowing, and then and they thought, wow, that thing's coming toward the car. Right. And like they, they didn't see, they didn't feel wind, and then they were like, what is that? And then it got right up next to the car. And the thing was about the size of the front from the front. He said from the from the back of the front door all the way to the front of the car. It was that big. Holy crap! Yeah. That's so a, however big that is, so it's totally a Celica, and that's about the was, that's about the size of a horse. That's a big. Yeah, yeah. It was a big animal. I asked him in comparison, like, would would you consider it to be the size of a horse, small horse? Yeah. yeah. About fourteen. We talked. Hands we, me high, and you yeah. talked about that earlier. So yeah, that's why you said that. Because yeah, we, yeah. We so. 
an animal the size of a small horse that had a ridge or hump on its back that at first the glance they thought it was a bush that was just rolling and then then they thought it was a hog the wife said no as it got up close to the vehicle it looked like a hyena wow that's like a hyena and you're going like what why would there be a hyena in the middle of texas well you tell me we're getting these reports of these hyena type creatures like more and more and more this thing ran up alongside the, the car it bumped the car uh, put a small dent in it. It didn't really, it didn't, uh, right. but it hit the car when it first ran out. And like, maybe it was doing it by accident. I don't know, but it hit the car and it didn't, um, you know, it didn't make them swerve too bad or whatever. And then it began to run alongside the car and then it veered off, and went out back out into the brush. Oh, wow. And the thing they said that it was, uh, the head was as tall as the top of the, uh, uh, car. Oh, wow. So yeah, so from the top of the windshield, <laughs> that's a big. Animal. That's a big animal, and it looked like a hyena. It had these weird rings, like color coloring rings on it, as, as they said. Almost had like a a mane around it that, that that culminated at the top into like a like a ridge. Right. And so yeah, I I talked to these people, and they were convinced that what they saw was some very prehistoric looking hyena. And uh, this was at night at 11 o'clock at night. Well, those country roads out in and around that area are very desolate. Um, so a creature like that, to be able to roam around freely at night without the threat of a car driving up on it, I, shucks. That's that's easy. Yeah, I mean. That's and, easy and for him to do. I don't know why it ran out at the car and then ran alongside it. Maybe it was... Uh, Maybe it was, you know, wanting to chase it just for just for giggles. <laughs> now, I got another report of, of a very similar incident that happened. This one was out near Odessa. Oh, okay. Further out. And these guys uh, work in an oil field. Okay, they're oil workers or whatever. Um, years ago, they said this happened back in the late, uh, the early 90s, that they were – out there doing whatever they were doing and that they were leaving the field, I guess, wherever, wherever they were working out. And right outside of Odessa, uh, that's the Permian Basin. That's full of uh, oil refine, oil uh, drilling. Oh, yeah, that's it's where they, booming out that, there. That's what they do, yeah. And I believe that, that, that Wolf Camp is out there, actually. Isn't that where Wolf Camp is, I think? Quite possibly. I, yeah. I, I'm going to have to look that up. And so they were leaving in their truck. They did say that they had had a couple beers, you know, but they weren't like drunk. And this large canid looking, they said it looked like a cross between a hyena and a wolf, came out a a out of the brush, came out toward their truck. This was uh, nine o'clock at night. And <laughs> there was another vehicle that was behind them. And that this thing came out and snapped at the tires of the truck. And they swerved and got clipped by a car behind them oh, man. that struck the creature oh. that was there in the road. This thing kind of turned, veered off, and ran off into the bush. Wow. And now they said it was the size of a large hog. Large hog, I tried to ask, it was just being correspondence reading it, you know, and I'm like, what, 200, 400 pounds? The guy said 400 to 500 pound creature. That's a huge creature. But that it was uh, that it had limbs. But he and, was and, talking about in height, though, of a hog, a four, four to five. Yeah, he said that it was the size of a four That's to five hundred pound hog, but not built like a hog. Right, right. Yeah, just that, that it had lanky girth, limbs, but right. that it had a big body, uh, very hyena looking, according to them. The tail was kind of tucked down, and the way that the the creature came out was with purpose, like it was trying to snap at their vehicle, their their work truck. Wow. You know that that's curious because, you know, you got, you know, the the area. The, excuse me, the incident around Abilene, basically, it was snapping at them too, or it was chasing them, and then now this one out there near the Odessa was chasing them. Makes you think: What are they like dogs? Or they, you know, were they trying to catch the car? I mean, one of them, ha you know, one of these incidents happened a few years ago. I think it's yeah. in 2015. The wow. other incident happened in the early 90s. Oh wow! But so they've been out there for a while. Yeah, that's whatever they are. What? Yeah, I truly. And, and the only thing I can think of with these things is this. Well, you know as well as I do, there's so many caves 
within Texas that that are probably yet to be discovered or are discovered, but people are not privy to the exact locations of these uh Now, are there caves, ca- caves out in West Texas, too? You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say yes or no, but it wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised if there are some caves out there in West Texas in certain areas. And I know once you start, you go further west, you eventually hit the Davis Mountains and all that area. So, well, speaking of that, the the other end, there was another one that, oh. that I got that I've had this one for a while. Uh, I think it was Sanderson. Yeah, Sanderson. Sanderson yeah, that's, that's way that's out in West Texas. That's yeah, that's out near uh, Langtree. That's along the border. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, guy was mo- was riding his motorcycle out there, and uh, I think this one happened in I, I believe he said 1996, but he was driving his motorcycle out there, and one of these hyena looking creatures came up behind his bike and started pacing him. And he was going about 50, <laughs> and this thing was keeping pace. And then another one that was even bigger came from the side and started running alongside him. Holy! They Jesus. didn't attack him. But they did p- parallel him, the one that was right behind him, and it was almost like they were trying to drive him toward a toward another to a certain location. Yeah, he felt like he was being pushed off the road to go off the road onto the side of the road. Oh man! Now the interesting thing about this one is that as he outpaced him and he got up to about sixty, he got away. He looked back and he could see what he thought, even though it was dark. He said he thought one of them was standing up on two legs. Oh, wow. Now, this was not the same as the other creatures because they, they did not report them standing, standing on two, up. On two yeah. Legs. yeah. That's interesting. I don't know what you make of that. Well, number one, you know, we've, we've come in contact with so many reports and the chasing and all this other stuff. We've heard it from, you know, the regular dogmen. We've heard Bigfoot doing the same thing. We've heard... But these creatures, you know, this is this is something else, the whole hyena thing. That that's the key element in all these incidents that we've discussed so far is that they're hyena looking. Yeah, a lot and most of that is in West Texas. You know, and I find that I find that really interesting because I remember that uh we've had a few people send us emails, one uh one in particular, and I'm I'm sorry that I can't think of the uh I can't think of her name right off the bat, but she sent me a picture of a gugwe, which is reminiscent of what some people may say is uh, um, this hyena-looking creature. But I don't know. I mean, could we have a different type of gugwe well, down here? I thought a gugwe had like hum- the human-type legs or the bigfoot. Yeah, type yeah. They, but these did did they, I mean I don't know. Did, were any of these? Was there any mention of what the hind legs look like? No, not from those reports. Now, you you did want to get into the one uh, that was west of Waco. Yeah, that one out there. Now, that one we talked, you know, you mentioned that one to me and we talked about it briefly. Let's hear about that story because that, you know, once you get outside of Waco proper, you've got so many little towns around there. You got places like China Springs. Which is actually close to where. You know, and that China Springs is not connected to Waco. It's not, for lack of better words, a suburb, kind of like Lakeway is. Lakeway is a suburb of, of Waco. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, you 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 don't you don't feel like you've left Waco when you're in Lakeway. Yeah. But when you if you're traveling to China Springs, oh you've left Waco. That's funny because Austin has a Lakeway too that's a suburb of Oh Austin. yeah. <laughs> yeah we have a lake at Lakeway. Yeah. Yeah, th- th- this guy was just saying that he was hauling some some lumber or something. I can't remember exactly what. I got a it was just a thing he'd sent me oh yeah he was hauling some lumber and like like or some uh panel paneling is what it was right and he was hauling it and, and it was late at night and it was the last run of the night or whatever and these two hyena looking creatures ran out in front of his truck one of them looked almost like it was chasing the the bigger one looked like it was chasing the smaller one the smaller one had its tail tucked between his legs and when it, they got to the end of the road the, it looked like what he said that the one that was chasing the other one reached out with what looked like arms oh, wow. and tripped the other one's legs out from under it and got on top of it. And he drove right by as they were tussling on the side of the road. <laughs> Same species, but just two, like one looked bigger than the other. Was it playful or? Uh, didn't I didn't ask. I didn't, or get was that. It I didn't get that. Something that, you know. That's, like I said, that's it was just a strange. report I'd gotten when I was reading through my 
my stuff and, and uh, we get stories. If we mention something, then we'll end up getting hits from other people that will give us. Once again, this stuff is, tends to be sort of in the West, West of 35. That's really interesting that West of 35, you hear a lot more of the hyena looking, looking creature. creature. I haven't really gotten any report. Now, you said something about the Daniel, I mean, the the Sam Houston. Sam Houston National Forest. Most of the time, though, I will, you know, I will concede this, is that most of the time people report seeing the quintessential werewolf looking dog man. It, but yeah, I got the, her story out of there. I remember telling. And there's a few, but there's a few here and there that do come across this hyena looking creature. And again, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I wouldn't poo poo anybody who reports a hyena looking creature because if you've ever been into the Sam Houston National Forest, it's quite anything creepy. <laughs> could probably live there. Yeah, it's. I actually think Gandalf spent some time there too. I quite possibly. Who knows? Maybe some of the yeah, yeah. some of the some of the, the Gelflings uh, have a play. You know, from yeah. Dark Crystal. I think. Oh yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's strange. For in in all seriousness, folks, this you know Sam Houston National Forest and the whole eastern portion, basically west of I forty five. Then you start getting to some really thick woods out there and it only gets thicker the f- the further you go all the way up to the Sabine River it gets super thick out there so and so with with that being said running across a plethora of strange creatures one of them being this hyena type creature it wouldn't surprise me at all yeah doesn't surprise did me did you at get all. a description no no all, all i all i gathered from that particular uh from the particular report that I read, was that it looked like a hyena. It did not, you know, they reported it as a dog, man, but it had hyena-looking features. That's the way I remember it. And, and so that's the only reason it caught my attention, because at the time I'd been reading so many of the reports out there about dog, man, that the thing that stuck out to me is that, oh, it resembled a hyena. So that's why it stuck in my head. I couldn't tell you all the particulars, And so I said, well, that's really strange, hyena-looking type dog man. So, but then again, now that we're talking about it, is it really a dog man? I mean, that's the question. What is this Well, I mean, what is a dog man? I mean, is a dog man a dog? Is it a wolf? Well, we, I guess we, a hyena, all of the above. uh, Yeah. I guess uh, when you think about it in terms of what, um, in terms of what, uh, Aristotle and how he created the the uh, taxonomy, you know, taxonomy. He's the father of the, the the system of taxonomy. You know, kingdom, phylum, all that classification thing about the creatures. Originally, he Aristotle out, was the was the teacher of Alexander. Yes, he was, and, and he traveled with Alexander. And a lot oh, of people yeah. called Alexander the scientist king. Yes, because they was, cataloged all yeah. the animals that they came across. And that's the whole thing that that uh, Aristotle started that system. Now, granted, over the years. It has been refined. Oh, yeah. But he started it, and a lot of what, a lot of, uh, kind of like they say, it, it fell under the whole philosophy, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it must be a duck, or related to the duck, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how they started out the classification. Interesting, because a lot of that knowledge, I think, was destroyed in the burning of the library. Yeah, that was probably the greatest travesty of-, of That was definitely, you know, if folks, if you don't know what that is- Check we, it out. We lost- uh, uh, the, our, our, thousands our, and thousands, thousands of years, years of, of knowledge, knowledge that were just destroyed by the the burning of the li- Library of Alexandria. Yes, which was actually founded by Alexander the Great, and Arist- it was Aristotle. He was the brainchild of putting all this putting knowledge all together. together. Yeah. So, anyways, I guess we could keep going, <laughs> but I want to hear about the Dangerfield, Texas. Oh, uh, the event. one near Longview. Yeah, outside of what, Longview, whatever that hyena creature. I want to hear about yeah, that. Yeah, that, that that one's unique in in Texas in the way that it's on in the east. Just yes. like you had said, the the Sam Houston National Forest. I have not heard any reports out of the Sam Houston National Forest. Um, I take your word on that, because this one happened north of there, the same forty five corridor. Now there's a difference between thirty five and forty five, folks. Forty five is in the east, thirty five sort of in the middle. Of Texas. Yeah, 45 is in the east, and yeah, 35, 35 kind of splits, splits the middle of the state, mm-hmm, more or less. Down the middle, and uh, a little more to the east, but, you know, it splits it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what we got was a hunter sending, sending us a story of being chased. He was up a tree in a tree stand, not far from his vehicle, lucky for him, 
But unfortunately, the vehicle may have been what brought this creature out because this thing was sniffing around his truck, and then it began to walk over toward where he was at, which was about 40 yards away, I think he said. And uh, now he was up the tree, just going to check it out and just doing like a look, a lookout, you know, to see if he could, you know, see whatever. And then he was thinking about going down and going deeper into the woods. Now, thank goodness he didn't <clears throat> because this thing came up about 10 minutes as he was up that tree. It didn't take long, which made him think that this thing may have been stalking him, stalking his vehicle even. And it came out. He said it looked like a large hyena. He said it was same thing, prehistoric. He said it had this weird looking head. It was like almost like it was squared off looking head with these rounded looking ears. He said it was de definitely hyena like. Because I asked him, did it look wolf-like? And he he was pretty adamant that it was more of a hyena-looking creature. The back of its legs were lower. The shoulders looked weird. And, and he, he said that this thing got up to the tree. He said that the front, when it was walking, it walked very naturally on all fours. But then when it got up to the tree, he noticed that this the front, the front limbs looked almost arm-like. Oh, wow. And he didn't get a good look at like... It's standing on two legs until the very end of the encounter. So this thing went up the back end of the tree, okay? Knew he was up there and was looking at him and circled the tree three or four times. It was a really big tree he was up in. And it, it just started climbing up the tree quickly, coming up toward him. He said that it was probably about six foot tall, but it was really wide, really big, like very muscular. And it just started going up the tree quickly. And it was coming up the back end, and he just jumped down and then ran to his truck, got in his truck. The thing dropped down and was, was on two legs when it dropped down from the tree. And then it got down on all fours and ran right toward his truck. Now, he said that it started to climb up into the back of his truck, and he swerved and threw it off. Oh, wow. So that's what he claimed. And then he said that it just stood up in the middle of the of the trail where he was, where he was driving. And After just, he shook it off? Yeah, just shook it off. And he said it even made a noise like a hyena. He said it made a like a laughing, like a, you know. Oh, wow. And and so, you know, that was uh, a very odd, that was a very strange encounter. And so he said for years he didn't really say anything about it, but that somebody else had mentioned it to him that they had had a run-in with a thing like that, that they were out in that same area and that this thing was like walking along on the side of the road in the middle of deer season. And that it just stood up on two legs with the really long. Now, the, the person that told him this uh, was his. I think he said it was his brother-in-law's brother. So he said that it stood up on 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 its two legs. The back legs were very short compared to the front legs. Yeah, so, and it had this long, front. slender body in the middle, but these really big upper body shoulders and skinny, but skinny limbs. Kind of like a cartoon character. Yeah, of. I mean, it sounded, yeah. <laughs> Reminiscent I mean, of that. Well, you know, when we're talking about the one, we haven't got into it yet, but the one from West Virginia we were talking about. Yeah, we're going to come back to you that You get one into that and it start, you start thinking like, what is this? I mean, it, you know, but then again, you know, it, it, it's reminiscent of another story that I had told on Vic's show, um, the one from West Virginia. But we'll get into that in a minute. That's not the only story that comes out of the East for these uh, hyena-looking creatures. Now these other the other encounters we got, well, I guess oh, there's there's a couple that weren't from Texas. I'm, I know you mentioned it just a while ago, and I'm just drawing. Yeah, a blank. I, I, the there was one out of uh, Alexandria. Oh, and, oh yes, and, wait a minute, and, hold on, and, hold on. You uh, that just brings to mind also your grandparents. My grandparents had an encounter. Yes, now that that is that's a, that's a weird story too. You know, we know one thing. You've never gotten into real big detail about it. You've you've briefly you, or you've casually mentioned it on Vic's show, and you've casually mentioned it on here before. I don't think I've ever heard you get into real detail about that one. You know, why don't we jump into that? <clears throat> well, this one happened in Louisiana, and it happened back in I believe the mid seventies. I mean, I don't even know if that I was born at the time. I think I was just my grandfather was a truck driver for thirty years, and so not. Um, my grandfather, how do you describe him? <laughs> he was not a normal, uh, conventional guy. I don't know how to say it. He was, <laughs> he lived by his own rules. He was a World War II vet. He was just a, a cantankerous guy. He kind of did his own thing. Saw the world the way he saw it and was very matter of factly. Didn't really buy into the ghost thing very much. Right. But did, did tell me some stories about some of the weird things he saw when he was, when he was traveling. 
one of which was a hyena looking creature that, that him and my grandma Sophie, they, they saw it on the side of the road near Baton Rouge in Louisiana. And they were, they were driving down the highway, taking a load of goods. And this thing kind of just came out of the, the wooded area, the wood line, whatever, stood up on two legs. It looked like a, a giant oversized hyena stood up on two legs. And to me, you know, I always thought, man, they saw a werewolf. But but they described it as very hyena like, but it was on two legs. They said it was. They they said it came out. They saw it come out and kind of sit by the side of the road, on all fours. As they started to 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 pass it, it stood up on two legs. That's just crazy. And my grandmother was like, "I'll never forget it as long as I live." It was the weirdest thing. She's like, "It was just a a big hyena looking creature, you know, very prehistoric looking." I hear that same thing, you know. Now I asked my grandma this, you know, right before she died in in '05. Me and her were talking, and that was one of the things I had asked her. I was like, went back to that encounter, and I asked her that in front of a couple friends and my brother, and I brought it up to her because I wanted to see, you know, it's been years since we had talked about it. the story changed, you know. That was uh, when I talked to her about that. It was probably about a uh, year before she died, and she she said the same thing. And then the story Nothing didn't change. Yeah. It did not change. It was that she saw that. My grandfather, J.D., was with her, and they witnessed this thing, a hyena-looking creature, and it stand up on two legs. Um, the, the back legs look really short. The upper body was very big and heavy, bulky, according to what she said. That's just amazing. Well, I mean, it's proof that they've been around for a while, but it's just amazing that, that these creatures are out there. Many people call them dog, man. I'm just, it reminds you of a hyena. Please say so. Please I, say that's it's what a I say. hyena, you know, because <laughs> yeah, we get stories picture. and they'll say, I saw a dog man. And then yes. like this one guy, he was coming from, a, I'm not going to say where, but a, a, there's a lot of, um, this is like a mini, sil- well, not mini. This is Silicon Valley East, really. Oh. And Austin. Okay? Yeah. So there's a lot of uh, places, you know, like, uh, we, you know, we have Dale here. We have Apple. We have all these different. Oh, yeah. Google. Google. Google's They're all here. got a building here, too. They're everywhere. Um, but this guy, he was working for, I'm not going to say where, but a very large, um, not one of those, but, but a very large computer firm company, whatever working late. And he had just transferred here from out of state. And so he was driving home, uh, right outside of Austin and this big wolf like hyena looking, whatever. And like he said, it, it, it could have, cause I asked him point blank. I was like, you say it looked like a wolf, but did it look like anything else? Was it dog like at all? Was it? And he said, "You know, if I had to say, I would say that it was like part hyena, part wolf. Didn't look more hyena than wolf, or wolf and hyena." He said, "It just if you took two together and put and them together, them up. Yeah. and then if you put hands on the front of it, because then it was running on all fours." He said, "I could have swore it had hands, and that the 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 way it ran was like the arms going underneath the legs and then back and forth, and it was just so bizarre the way it ran." And he said it kept pace with his car, and he said this was only the se- <laughs> this was only the second day he had been in Austin. So he's going like, <laughs> "What in the heck is going on? I'm over here in this oh, wow. uh, town, and and I'm going out, you know." And of course, he was driving from Austin to Maynard. Oh well, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's you know, quite a bit of a, that's well, well, Maynard Maynard's Chief's neck of the woods, and he's, right. they've had stories of creatures out there. Right. Which part of Maynard, though? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Excuse me. Let, let me back Maynard's up. Maynard's not very big. No, no. Uh, is this pre the uh, 290? The the pre predates the tollway? No, no. This couldn't have been because that was only three years ago. Right. Yeah. This story, I think, is 2015. Oh, no, wait. I'm wrong. Four, four years ago. Okay. Because I know that the, the tollway... Well, he obviously wasn't on the tollway if he saw Well, that. let me ask Anthony, how long has the tollway been there? It's been about five or six years. Yeah, I it's think. been there for a while. Yeah. So I think he said that it was late 2015. So, I mean. He must not have been on the tollway to see this. No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I think he was going down the one of those back country roads to, yes. get, to get to the tollway. Oh, okay. From where he was coming from. I know where, but I don't want to say because oh, it's okay. kind of like, you know, I don't want to. But what I'm saying is that he obviously took the back way. If he got on the toll road later, he he was obviously taking toll uh, uh, back roads 
to get up to the tollway, like you just now, said. Now, there yeah. was somebody that told me a story, and then, like I said, these are those little brief little things, you know, you can't really make a show out of just doing, but this guy was, was on the toll road going to Georgetown. Yes. Now, you know, Interspace Caverns, you were talking about the, yes. the, the, the there are caverns yeah, and caves all over this area. Oh, yes, there are. Interspace Caverns right there, you know. Yeah. You hey, got Longhorn got- Caverns, you got Interspace Caverns, you got the ones in shirts, uh, what are they called? Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Down there, Shirts is outside of yeah. San Antonio. Yeah, it's good. They got, they got that that uh, wildlife preserve yes. right there. Because that, that also reminds Natural me. Natural Bridge. Yes. I also, um, just to throw this out there, I found out approximately six to eight months ago or longer that- You're pregnant. Mm, no. <laughs> if that were the case, I'd be a filthy <laughs> rich man. No. Uh, uh, seriously, though, in my neighborhood where I live, they're- in the subdivision, there are caves out there. What in Cedar Park? Yeah, out in the out in the neighborhood. Okay, so that I, we've that talked I about this in. before. You digging in your backyard doesn't uh, make a cave. Oh no, no, right? this this is. But then again, the, the bomb you, shelter that you're building that ain't a cave, right? There, there's also a, there's an old. Uh, I don't know if the quarry's still in use out there in Cedar Park. Well, but, there's a quarry right up the road over here, across from Domain. Yeah, yeah. There's there's yeah. quite there's a few quarries big old, around Big old here. lake right there now. They made a man-made lake right oh, there. Oh, that's great. Well, there's a quarry out there towards- um, I like the way you just dismiss me. Oh, that's great. Now there's a- <laughs> No, no. I'm just because there's there, there's one out there's one out in Cedar Park in the, in the area that I- Close to the area that I live in. I didn't- Oh! I know exactly. I'm sorry. Uh, I know exactly. Jonestown yes, and, and you go Lago toward 1431. Vista. Yeah. Right there to the right. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So as far as caves are concerned, right. I'm sure there's plenty around there. And, and I know I found out through, you know, my homeowner association that we have a cave that that's somewhere in our subdivision. I never yeah, found out exactly There are where. caves out there. Yes. Now, I, I was thinking more of the Cedar Park, like in the town. But no, you're, not you're, the you're town. talking about out in the outskirts. Out towards Oh, yeah, outskirts. there's a ton of them. Out yeah. there by the lake where I used to work, there was yeah. one. And then, and then if you go out towards... Uh, there's a bunch of them. I mean, there, there's a bunch of areas out there. I know exactly what you're talking about. And so, God near Jonestown, there's a lot of st- that, yeah, the big mountains out there that you yeah, can go that's through the, the hill mountains. country. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say big mountains, but they're big hills. You they're know? big hills for all those out there who think Texas is flat. Small oh, mountains, not. big hills. Yeah, because I almost built a house out there, and then I yeah. got I got freaked out because of all the cedar out there. I'm like, <laughs> no, thank you. There's cedar everywhere. Oh out no, there, it's but... it's terrible out there. But mm-hmm. yeah, the um. No, the, what, what we were talking about, though, was like this guy that, that, that I was going to say, he was in, going on the tow road in Georgetown uh, right before he got off the exit, and he saw, but it wasn't a big one. He said it looked like a small hyena-looking wow. creature with a with a weird bushy tail, and that it ran out in front of his vehicle, you know? Now, that's weird. I mean, he said that he goes, I could have swore it just looked like a hyena. He said it was the size of a dog. You know, and I said like, okay, like a dog, like a medium to, to large size. He said, yeah, medium to large size dog. Said right when he was about to get like late at night, and he was going to go from the toll road onto thirty five, right there near Georgetown. Uh, I, I think Gerald maybe cl- close right to around that. that area. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And then and then it ran right in front of him and his wife. They were driving. How long ago was this? Uh, this was probably like two years ago because I got that story just recently, and he said he's so it was probably so the development is probably well. Two years ago, the development was nowhere near to half, where it is now. It would be a year and a half ago because that yeah. was back when I was working. We were working out there. Oh, okay. So that would have been about a year and a half ago. He yeah. told one of my guys that. Well, we've had a lot of. Well, you you know as well as I do. There's been a lot of development north of Georgetown. Yeah, we've been working Georgetown out there. and uh, Gerald. There's a lot of development. So in a year and a half, there's a lot of urban sprawl that's come popped up out there. You know, there. Gerald was once wiped out by a tornado. I remember that completely too. completely flattened. Now it's all grown yep. back up. I was stationed at. Fort Hood at the time when that happened. In Colleen. Yep. Yeah. But it's it's amazing where you come across some of these weird, strange creatures. And I was just thinking about another incident you mentioned. Let's I know you mentioned that your grandparents had that, you know, incident out there, you know, near Alexandria out in Louisiana, you know, when they were truck driving. But you also I remember you mentioning that there was another I think a gentleman had one out there. No, Alexandria, Alexandria in that area. Yeah, he was driving down the road, and if anybody knows, Louisiana has hor- horribly bad roads. They have a lot of potholes, and <laughs> I don't like driving through Louisiana. I love the state of Louisiana. Yeah, don't get me wrong; yeah. I like the food. The people are great. Yeah, I just don't like your roads. <laughs> I, I would I like to I don't not think break an of, axle. Out, you know, I think there's a lot of Louisianans out there who'll tell you the same thing. Well, the st- and this is all seriousness, folks. Statistically speaking. At least ten people a week go missing in Louisiana due to potholes. 
<laughs> Those are facts, sir. Those are facts that I just made up. Okay, I wouldn't be making mm -hmm. up facts if they weren't if they were real. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, right. anyways, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. No, what happened was the guy was driving, and he said that that he literally kind of swerved because there was a a big like crack in the road, like on on the road, you know. And he was like, "Whoa!" So he kind of swerved to kind of miss it, whatever. And he ended up kind of going off the road a little bit. And he said, right there, this thing just kind of popped its head out of of the of the brush, and just was right there. And it looked and just kind of jumped back in. And he said, when it did, it jumped back on two legs. Oh, wow. this was the freakiest thing you ever saw. He said it was like it looked like the head of a giant weasel at first. He thought it was like a giant weasel, uh -huh. and he's like, what is that? And then he just like, was that is that a small bear? And he said, when it jumped back on two legs, he saw claws, like hand like claws. And then he said that it was on two legs, two short, stubby legs, and the face looked just when he got a good look at it crossing. It was a hyena. That's that's strange, <laughs> but then again, you know we're talking. We've been talking about this particular phenomenon, and you know I've always told you that, you know, after reading all the works of Sitchin, and then of course you have the um, Sumerian, the Enuma Elish, the the the, the epic of creation. And in there, it talks about um, how plants, animal life, or how the creation of man came to be. Many people, you know, and this is not to offend anybody, re re you know, regardless of your re religious beliefs, it's this not trying to offend anybody. But in there, it talks about how these, you know, ancient astronauts, these beings came to this planet, mining, looking for gold, got, you know, the crew they brought with them, got tired of it. Started a mutiny because they were doing a backbreaking work. So they revolted. Then, of course, the higher command said, hey, guess what? All right, let's get together. Let's have a meeting. We're going to solve this problem. We're going to crush your union. And we're going to create you a um, a primitive worker, a replacement. Somebody take your place, do all the backbreaking work so you don't have to. And then, of course, then you have the story of creation. Well, part of the, what this is to me when I think of these creatures and any other, any other and any of these other odd remnant creatures that people see out there that are not that don't fit the paradigm of anything is i think at the in the part of the epic of creation where it talks about how once it was decided that they were going to create you know the god inky was going to create or ea as he says ea once Wait, he decided, whoa, inky. inky i thought his name was darth vader no <laughs> that's never a whole that's a different oh, storyline okay never <laughs> no. but anyways once they decided that they were going to do this they had to put a bunch of, I guess you could say, they had to put things up on the drawing board and say, what are we going to go with? So they started making all these hybrid creatures. Chimeras, yes. Because why did they mess with the hyenas? Well, I no, mean, the whole point, they did that with everything. That's, so why in, in, that's why in mythology, in my opinion, I, this is, this is, this is, you know, my my opinion. I think that's why Greek mythology and all these other mythologies have all these mythical creatures, i.e. a minotaur, centaur, satyr, or satyr, however you want to call it, satyr, satyr, and all these other strange creatures out there. That's why they're out there because these, the Anunnaki went through this process to try to find the proper prototype. And then, of course, they finally, when they figured out that none of these are working, they realized, well, it's going to have to, quote unquote, look like us. Hence, it says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, not the New Testament, two different things in my book. Um, the Old Testament, it said, you know, let us, you know, make man in our image after our own likeness. That's basically in the epic of creation that was saying, it says, we got to make them look like us. But because it has to be bipedal, has to be capable of thinking for himself, but, you know, can't have all the attributes we have, but it's got to be like George Carlin said, got to be smart enough to run the machines and keep the books. And, you know, that's about it. No more than that. So they, that's when they settled it. Hey, it's got to be bipedal and humanoid and hence humanity and so on and so forth, you know, the result of the story. But the thing is, is that before that, they went through all these these prototypes of what their replacement worker was going to be. But why and, why would they use a hyena or a wolf as a replacement? Well, the Wouldn't they of, be the like strength, a guardian? The though? strength, though, you, you, there, there also has to be I, strong. I, I don't think that they would be the workers. Right. I, I honestly think they well, were made to well, keep, no, no, I, keep I the agree. workers in line. Right, and, and, and I agree that... Because that guy, Darth Vader, he came down and he said, you will do this or die. And then they were like, no, we're not, because we're part of the rebellion. And then Darth Vader was like, okay, well, I will unleash hyena men and 
There you go. Werewolves, and you will do it. Yeah. But realistically, you know, when you think about it. And that's actually that's actually what happened, folks. <laughs> that's the real, that's real. You know, you know along I'm getting lines. my information from a George Lucas movie. Hey, hey. But he was a very, very smart historian. There's speculation that George Lucas talked to people who- Who knew this. Yeah, From long, this. long ago in a galaxy far, far away. I don't know about all that, but anyways, that's- to me, it makes sense. It was because, on TV, and TV's not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> of course not, right? Yeah. It makes sense that they went through these prototypes and figured out, nope, it's not what we need them for not to do this work. But it doesn't say that they destroyed them all. It doesn't say any of that. It didn't. It doesn't say whether they put them to use You don't think things. that maybe they were the Nephilim and that, that they were destroyed in the flood, but then some escaped. But then well, like, no, no, like, no. like, like I, people I like agree D-Doss and my wife, they both believe that- The beasts of the field. That it's a, a the, gap theory, that something else happened. Well, here's the thing. When you look at what the earth looks like today, and you had this flood, okay? So did Noah put the kangaroos on there too? The wallabies? I wasn't there, sir, so I would not know. If <laughs> so those, they were, those, those are I legitimate mean, what, questions, right? And why would you bring up them? Because they're on- They were in Australia. Isolate. Exactly. So was it a worldwide flood or was it not? Well, according to archaeology, it wasn't. It, it, was, it, was, it, it was in pockets. In pockets and, yeah. of the world, yeah. So that's, that's what I'm saying is that I believe that, like you but said- But I think the people at that time would have believed that it was just- It's worldwide, worldwide, yeah. Because there was no land for whatever- Okay, but you know we're we're let's di- you know dig- yeah we're, digress. we're we digressed a little bit, but that's what I'm no, saying. You to did, me. not me, folks. Well, I get, digress. You, you're gonna get hate mail now because they're like, okay. oh yeah, we're talking, and because well, there's people that don't want us to talk about anything but the stories. They want me to come out, and I'm I'm actually thinking about doing a show where I just do a robot voice, and I'm like, at this time the man did get and did he see and blah blah, blah and I just was gonna do that for the whole show yeah. to show people how boring it is if I just sit here and tell you a story and I don't have any kind of uh, personality to it. Well, Granted, my personality can be annoying, like fingers <laughs> on a chalkboard, you know, fingernails on a chalkboard. Well, you but know, it's it's at least I'm a human being telling the story. I'm not a robot. Yes. Well, we've stated it before in previous shows that we're here. This is like a discussion that you're having with friends on the couch in the living room, even over, though we're not your coffee. friends. Just so you know, <laughs> I would never let you so, people in my house. So I don't even like Sal being here. In fact, it's almost time for you to leave. That's more than enough. Yeah, it's it's. The, but sounds okay. Sounds okay in small doses. <laughs> yeah. Small. But here, here, let me get to this other encounter. Yes. Right, we're, give we're, us the, we're getting short on time. So yes, give us the last, give us the last encounter. Well, okay. The, the last one that I have of the hyena ones or whatever is, is from San Angelo, near San Angelo. Yeah. That's Some West people, Texas area. That's, yeah. That's West, West Texas, Texas once again. And they mm-hmm. had stopped at a rest stop. Oh. Okay. And the lady had a dog that needed to go make number one or two, whatever. Right. Had and to go so, use the bathroom. Yeah, had to use the bathroom. So it got out and it was making its poops and peas. And apparently <laughs> this w- really large hyena looking creature came from underneath a fence that was near the rest stop, according to what this was, what I was told and ran, literally went up to this woman and snatched her dog. And just took off with it. And took off with it. Now, this woman that it happened to was an elderly lady, and she was with her great niece and nephew, I guess. The, the, um, um, the niece was her blood niece, and then she was married to somebody in that. And they were in the the van, and they witnessed this, like, happened, like, really quickly. And this thing snatched up and then jumped, like, went, stood up on two legs, ran back, got back down on all fours with this dog in its mouth. Oh, wow. Okay. Went up underneath the fence now listen to this okay never underestimate the resolve of a dog lover okay because this woman this okay, little old lady who was 73 years old hit this creature hit the creature with her cane oh she and had, it dropped it she was using the as gun. it was going underneath the fence and the little dog was able to run down the other side of the fence and get out and oh. come back to her Holy Jesus. Yeah, that's what I was told. And, you know, and so I was given this story by the the guy whose wife, that's her grand, her grand aunt. Wow, that's The that's dog ballsy. was was bitten, though. <laughs> right. And it did it did have to get to a vet, and it had a punctured lung. Oh, man. Um, They did supposedly call the police. And How the big was this The cops were like, I just, they just said it was a giant, like, coyote, which isn't true. Right. There's no such thing. Well, there may be an oversized coyotes out there, but giant-sized coyotes, that would be 
that would be a one in a trillion chance for a. They for, described it as being hyena like. Wow. That's what they told me. That was a dog man story that I was given uh, a long time ago, like three three years ago. Wow, that's interesting. But I never had. I wanted to keep gathering information about the hyena the stuff until we could do an entire show about it. And as you know, yeah, we have yeah. talked about this show for a while, and we just kept saying, "Okay, we'll just keep collecting, get them, more stuff, yeah, and, and then we'll get them together, and we'll." Um, and this whole hyena stuff, it, it's it's really. You know, it, it always leaves you wondering, is it a dog man? It, it's just, it's, it's strange. Me. And again, like I said earlier, mentioned the whole deal about the epic of creation. I believe these are remnants of that because they didn't destroy them all. And the flood. Well, that's, and, that's, it, and here's what I think about that, with all due respect. That's your yeah. crackpot theory, not mine. Well, you can, but, you can call it what you like. You can call it what you like. But, I call it uh, <laughs> South Science. Hey, I'm just... That's 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 my opinion. Hey, Sal, hey, yo, Sal Manila, it's your it's, <laughs> Sal Capone. It's your your show. You you believe what you believe, and I will choose to believe nothing you say. Hey, there you go. I don't know. And I, I, I don't know, Sal. Honestly, let me level with being it's honest. Possible. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I agree with you on that too. You agree that I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I don't know. I, I no. I'm just saying it's it's that's my plausible theory. Is it is it concrete and that'll never change it? No. I'm just thinking. I, th I think since we've started doing the show, we've changed the views about a few things. Well, we have to because we don't have any concrete evidence. When we're presented with the evidence of things that we um, like, those pictures. Yes. It's so weird. I mean, you're going like, "What is that?" I mean, you, yes. know, you can't explain it. One of them looked like a coyote man or something, and and of course, there again. My grandfather had claimed to have seen in Pinto Canyon out in West Texas these the little monitos, little, little, little monito, uh, yeah, coyote looking men. Yes, and he said they had little little ears, and they were just like little coyotes, and they would stand up and run on two legs, and then they would go yip yip yip. I sent you, I sent you a picture of that. The picture, yeah, and yeah. That, and that was so weird, man, because it just that's what it reminded me of, and. You know, I used to look for the Marfa lights. I would be out there yeah, and I would I, go to the the, 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 the lookout, you know. You see, you and my grandpa see. would sit there and tell me that I was so stupid for going out there and looking for them lights. <laughs> but yet he's the one seeing hyena and coyote men. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but you know what? I, I can't discount it because I saw what I saw when I was 15. And so, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and just to give folks a taste, Sometime in the near future, we're going to, our plan is to interview the gentleman yes. that was with Wolf that night when it happened. Yeah. We're going to interview him and 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 get his side we'll of the story. We're probably going to have to go on location and just go and, yeah. and then. And, and which which is okay, too, because, you know, I've, I've been needing to, to, to you know, get While you out guys about. are out there tromping around, I will be in the vehicle with a rifle. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Actually, we've been doing a little more on location stuff, trying to be a little more- uh, Proactive and more yeah. more investigative in a lot of these areas. And like I said, and we're also planning to bring Ernest back on or get, actually, we've never had him on. But Finish we'll get more of his stories and, and, and about pass the ranch. him on. Yeah, about the ranch. Because he, his grandfather- Yeah. Yeah, a ranch. Yeah. God, he said, I remember the first time we talked with him, he said, I got tons. He goes, me alone. He goes, I've seen them like 40 times. So I can only imagine how many more stories he had from all the workers he had well, to most talk of the to on encounter, a daily the, most basis. Most of the encounters, most of he saw him was brief, though. And right, like, right. It wasn't real. But can you imagine all the stories from the workers that are out there 24-7 and out and about doing a lot more than what he had to do? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine the encounters they have and all the stories that they would pass back to his grandfather and, and or, and he, he happened to listen in? Mm -hmm. That's nuts. I, I mean, I can only imagine. That's probably why he said, you know, he's got tons of stories from out there. Well, let me let me get this last one in before we get off the air. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Let's... And this one was what we we're talking about in West Virginia. Yes, yes, yeah. Let's not forget that one. Now, the the he the guy that told me this when we when we talked about it, it's he said that the ears were really tall. Now he said that he was talking like, you know, six to eight inches long tall, ears. Yeah, like... tall, long, pointed ears. Oh, wow. Almost like a like how a rabbit's ears stick up. Now, do you remember when when I when I was on Vic's show? Uh, I think I think it was episode one sixteen, and then that led into one thirty seven. I think in one thirty eight. I think it was one thirty seven, one thirty eight, or one thirty six. I don't know. Uh huh. But anyway, it was about the Hernandez Ranch. Yes. And so since then, I, I've talked to him a couple times. But Jerry had had said that his his daughter was like, "Look, 
Daddy a Bunny. Like, and it was oh, in the, yes, it was in the middle of winter. Mm-hmm. And he said he looked and he saw this thing with these really tall ears sticking up. But according to him, they didn't all look like that. But that particular one had really long, big ears. And <clears throat> when he was telling me the story, I almost thought of like Wiley e. Coyote. Yes. You know, well, this guy tells me a story about this entity. I want to say entity because I don't know what to call it. It was, yeah, it was just black. He said it was just pitch black. And it had these pointy ears that just stuck straight up, six to eight inches long. That's that's almost, and he said it almost looked like a rabbit with a wolf's face. And he said it looked very, very mean, very menacing. And that the first time he saw it, he was getting out of his vehicle, uh, going inside his house, and he heard growling. And he looks over, and he and he has like a gravel, uh, like a rocks in his driveway. And this thing had had like. He heard the gravel move. Right, the crunching. You know? Yeah, and so he looks and he sees this like weird black hand, and he said hand. Oh, wow. You know, and, and the body was covered in fur, and he said that he looked at it, it was just solid black, but you could make out canine features on this thing. And it, and it doesn't, he didn't describe it as being hyena-like, but these really big, tall ears. And he said that whenever his uh, girlfriend at the time saw it one day go by the window, that it had dropped down on all fours, that the ears were so tall that, that she almost thought they were horns. Holy Jesus. <laughs> now, you had, se- you had sent me a photo that, that yeah. we're not going to get into where it was or whatever, but, right. but there was a photo that was given to you. Yes. Well, where I, I, the I, thing I, looked like it had really big ears, almost horns. I mean, yes. like it was so, so tall. Yes. Yeah. That That photo, no big deal. No problem. Because, you know, hey- I give all the credit in the world to Duke Sullivan, right, from World Bigfoot Radio. He's got it on a video of his. I saw it, and it caught my attention because of what you had explained to me in regards to this story, yeah, which and, is why I captured it. Yeah, it was funny because I, I told you the story, and yeah. then you showed me the picture. Yes. Yeah, yes. it wasn't the other way around. Right. I mean, you know, and so that story was, was um, I kicked it around, you know, like, what what is it? Like, what was it? Uh, the only other thing about that, particular entity or whatever was that it like one day was laying down at the edge of the woods where, where they lived and that it, it you know he made noise he came out the back and it stood up on two legs completely fully erect on two legs and said it was probably eight feet tall from the bottom of its you know canine looking pawed feet according to what he said to the top of its ears but the ears like he said were six to eight inches wow that's that's nuts. And he said that shortly after that, they moved, which is <laughs> I what I would too. do, too. Yeah. You know, the, the reason, quickly to recap, I found that picture. It caught my attention, be, you know, because of you, i.e. The, the the bunny incident with the little girl with out at the Hernandez Ranch. That's mm-hmm. that's what triggered in my head when I saw this picture. That's why I captured it, and then I sent you a copy. Yeah. And, of course— and of course, the other one with the with the little you know the lobitos or the you know yeah. the little coyote men, <laughs> right? Those little coyote men was mm-hmm. that other picture I sent. You know, again, thanks to Duke Sullivan, that that all belongs to him. You guys go check him out at World Bigfoot Radio. He covers a lot of topics, folks. A lot of it has to do with giants, gugwies, Bigfoot, you name it. But um, it, it's really interesting, and he he's you know he's got a wealth of knowledge too. So, going back to what I'm talking about is that. This whole thing with with these hyena men, you know, is is this another strain? What is it? Because most people, well, I guess most people take in stride and think that it's a a variant of the dog man. But is it really? Well, you hear about them in Africa. Yeah, I had a buddy that, like you know, yeah, the hyena used to live in in Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. But he was from there, and he had said that this that the locals had lots of stories about these shape shifting hyena men. That's interesting. I, I don't know what that is. I mean, yeah, that, I think whatever the the local animal is, that's yeah, what, you know, that's well, it's true. But over there, it would make more sense if that kind of hyena men, because hyenas are there, and and again, well, Simon Young pointed out that we had, you know, and I knew this already, but he had he he pointed it out that we had these giant cave hyenas that lived right here, yes, prehistorically. The Pleistocene era is gone, but That's maybe true. some of the animals or remnants. Well, there still are, yeah. They got the, uh, well, they do have that supposed, the dinosaur that lives out in uh, in um, the Congo, out in the deepest oh, parts. Oh, Mokili Mbembe. Yeah, yeah, something to that, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. And again, that it's part, like a smaller version of a brontosaurus. Yes, it is. Or a brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus, or something like that. But it lives out there in the middle of the jungle where hardly no one goes because it is so inhospitable. Only the locals, only the local natives that live around there are the ones that travel in and around that area. But I don't even think they get that. It, they don't get as close to this area as people think. So there you have an example of an area in the world that's hardly, if ever, traveled, even down the open rivers in that area, because it's so inhospitable and mosquitoes will eat you up and who knows. So what's floating around in there? Don't know. What's swimming around in there? Don't know. What's traipsing around in those woods there? Don't know. And there's a lot of places here in the U.S. that are the same way. So hyena men? There's places in Texas that people don't set foot for decades. Exactly. So, you know, you pasture think, land that you'd be just, I mean. Exactly. And you think about West Texas. There's areas out in West vast. Texas. Yeah. And if it's hotter than blazes out there, people don't want to be running around out there during the day. And if these creatures get out and about during the day, that's fine. Because at night, you know, out in the deep West Texas, further you get out there, it's desolate. And at night, you know, you're only trying to get from point A to point B because there's really no place for anything else. So these things to running around and doing their thing. Yeah. It, it makes perfect sense to me. Because there's no, really nobody out there to watch them or see what they're doing. Well, it doesn't make perfect sense to me that hyenas are running around out here because I don't want them out here. I don't allow it. <laughs> well, I'm just talking. So leave. I've got You're not nothing welcome to, here, hyenas. Got nothing to do with them showing up here or not. All I'm saying is it makes perfect sense. We don't want your sense. kind around here. <laughs> you know, but yeah. it's it's strange. But it, it it definitely always leaves me thinking, is it a dog man? Or is it not? Yeah. So it's is it a rabbit man? <laughs> what is it? That's definitely the question. So with that, folks, you know, I guess it's going to wrap up our uh, episode, and uh, we're going to leave you with the uh, emails: wolfandsal at gmail dot com and daswolfman eighty eight at gmail dot com. Comment, like, subscribe, send us your stories, folks, because we want to hear them. We can only hope to find that perfect story. Heck, we find it every time we look into our email. Don't kid yourselves, folks. You guys got great stuff. Keep sending it. And with that being said, y'all have a good evening. See you. Peace.